What's up guys, Shane here from Fugitech 3D Printing and today we're going to check out Ascentium's PCTG filament. Welcome back guys, as I said, this is Ascentium's PCTG. I received a bit of this in a maker box a long time ago, I think like last year, like 2016 sometime, and it printed great. And I asked them, hey, can I see some more of it? They said yes. So here we have a 750 gram roll, not quite a kilogram. Some companies do that with some of these more specialty filaments. They don't do a full kilogram, they'll do 750 or even 500. But looking at the box, it's colorful, it tells you it's a Centium filament. Right here is the sticker. So uh, this is also the exact same box that their PLA came in that I tested out a while back. And I tested out a while back, but the video hasn't hit since I'm recording this one right now. It will be out soon though. Anyways, uh, it was the exact same box, a little window right here so you can see what's inside, and the lovely Made in the USA stamp on there. I love that. So let's see how this stuff looks. So inside here, there is a little sticker, Ascentium PCTG. It tells us nozzle temperature of 210 to 260 degrees centigrade, the bed temperature of 23 to 60, and print speed of 30 to 70. Uh, I do know this prints very, very similar to like a regular PET G. So I tend to slow this down just a little bit depending on the printer I'm on. The FT5, 60 to 80, you know, 60, 80 millimeters a second. Some of the other ones like the i3, like 30 to 40 millimeters a second. It really just depends. Uh, so here we have a Centium PCTG sticker on there. It gives you a 750 grams, 1.75 millimeter, and the batch number. As I always say, it's good to note the batch number in case you have any problems with it. It is a super thick spool, just like the PLA was. Now let us get into this now. Well, again, I was surprised to have a little bit of extra padding in it. I don't know if they did that because they knew how far they were shipping it to me or not. So your mileage may vary if you receive that or not. There's that. And I do find it interesting that they do this. They have two desk packs on here. And this is actually like a saran wrap. I'm sure there's a, a better term for it, but it's basically saran wrap on the filament to hold the desiccant right against it. There's one, there's two. There's the saran wrap with that. Put those away. And here it is. It is a single spool. It's not joined together at all and it's super thick and heavy. I really wish I had like a little scale to weigh this because I guarantee this weighs way more than a kilogram because of that spool. Uh, it's a good wine and it is super duper clear. It looks silver in the video, but I tell you this stuff looks like it's glass. Like it is really, really clear. You can't even see it on my finger. That's how clear it is. I mean, it's so transparent. So this will be really fun. If I can, I would love to put a volcano nozzle on my FT5 and print this like really big, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to simply for time's sake. Uh, anyways, let's uh, put this on the printer. See how things go. Mossbergen.com. Mossbergen.com is what is stamped onto this spool. If I remember, I would like to go and check and see if that's just who makes these spools or what that is. But that's, I haven't seen that before on something. Anyways, let's put this on the printer. Let's get it uh, printing, show you some time lapses, and let's see how it works. All right, well, I printed a ton of different things with this filament, and I probably only went through just over half of all the different things I printed, some with really high infill, as like this absolutely solid 2020 cube. I just wanted to see how it would turn out. I knew it wouldn't be see-through, because it's a clear filament, but when you print it, it gets frosted looking. But I printed this at a much, much higher temperature just to see if that would change anything. And when we zoom in here, we'll look at that. I printed some simple benches. I have some vases, vase mode rockets here to look at. So let's get a little closer and see how they turned out. All right, so the very first thing I printed was a 20, 20 millimeter cube, but with no top, no bottom, one perimeter in vase mode. 
and I printed this at 258 degrees centigrade. I didn't want to stress my CR10 too much. As you can see, it is very, very see-through at a very high temperature. I wanted to print this higher, but sadly the CR10 has a Teflon tube and I didn't want to go much higher. So this is the max I went on that. I didn't have a chance to print this on the FT5 very much. But either way, I just wanted to see, because they say at a lower temperature, like you start at like 240, it's going to be crystally glossy, or crystally I should say, like frosted looking. And then at a higher temperature, like 260 plus, it's supposed to get um, like clear looking like this, like crystal looking. So that was that. And then I printed a, uh, a 2020 cube in absolutely solid, as you can see, it is super heavy where well, you can't see that obviously you can see that it is absolutely solid all the way through it printed out great i mean the cr10 did a good job of this this took forever to print though because it slowed down on the low um, layers but either way i just kind of wanted to see what it was like this was printed at 240 so super duper frosted as even as it went down but again with that solid it almost comes out white you got my white table all right up next i did my coin I did this with the standard settings that I would do for my maker box two perimeters four top four bottom 15% infill and it came out pretty good the support underneath came off easy enough there's like one or two little pieces in here that like were a little hard to get out get out the knife and do that it uh, it's solid I get it's very very strong and this was printed at 240 so it's not so clear but also even if i would print this higher it would not have come out as clear as this simply because of the two perimeters they would have gotten frosted on top of each other anyways but it came out really well a little bit of stringy a little bit of blobbing on this so it acted as it said it's supposed to be like like pet g maybe a little bit better it came out just like pet g a little blobby but not too bad and also for structural i did this at uh, 100 percent info no i did this one this was not 100 percent. this one was at 20 so you can see the uh honeycomb in there it's pretty small that's a 20 percent infill and this came out pretty strong there's no no like there's a little bit of bending in it but like there's no creaking so it had great layered adhesion this was printed at 250 degrees centigrade and there's a little bit i probably should have upped the extrusion a little bit it's a little hard to tell but some of it didn't fill in enough, even though with four top and four bottom. Uh, I just felt like I should have done maybe five of them and up the extrusion multiplier a little bit for this detailed of a print. I mean, knife's not that detailed. For more detailed print here, I did a Benchy. And you can see the top, like you can, there is a little bit of see-through in it. This was printed at 250 degrees centigrade. It's pretty smooth. There was a little bit of stringing, a little bit of blobbing down in there. Again, on, on the, like, the white and clear filaments, it's really hard to see that kind of stuff. There's a little blob right here. But it handled it pretty well uh, with the cooling on, you know, the fan came on after I think four or five layers I have it set to. So it, it came out well, you can see the bottom. I was a little bit far away, so there's a little bit of separation in here, but you can see the CT, CT3D XYZ, a little hard to read on the screen though, but uh, it is there and it came out well. But again, you can see a little bit of see-through there printed at a higher temperature. They all say it's supposed to be strong, so here I have the single perimeter uh, stacking box. Uh, there was some crud on my bent on the uh, fill plate there, so don't mind that. But the bottom layers didn't come out so great. This is one of the earlier prints I did. Uh, after doing a couple changes, it did come out much better. But this was like one of the first ones. I had come bad adhesion on the first and second layer for some reason. I don't know. This was printed at 240 which for something this big maybe was too low, but it still came out pretty clear even at 240 on the single perimeter. And I mean, it's, I mean, it hasn't, it's not cracking or breaking. I mean, I can fold that. There, it finally cracked. Uh, yeah, it cracked right there. But uh, I mean, it's pretty strong. If you were using a couple of these to store some things on your desk, it would hold up fairly well. Obviously you're not gonna be bending it the crazy like that, but you know, it, it turned out pretty good. I did another vase here at 250. Just a little twisted heart vase to try out. Again, it was all right. Uh, on this one, again, my extrusion multiplier was a little low on this one. You can see the gaps here, right in there. And that was just, it was too tight of a turn and the nozzle wasn't putting out enough filament. Well, the printer wasn't putting out enough filament fast enough. So I definitely need to up my extrusion multiplier for this kind. And there was actually some splits down here, the poor layer adhesion because it was just under extruded. I did a couple other things. So this was part of a, uh, a G clamp that I did, which I think I got rid of the other parts of it because uh, they didn't work out so well. But uh, it was just bad layer adhesion at 250. 
with 20% infill, two perimeters, this would not like turn in. There was just too much gunk in the threads of the actual G clamp when I would put this in and this just would just snap. So it definitely was not strong enough to be able to be used like that, even though I figured it should have been. And I don't know, maybe I'm just doing the wrong settings for this, you know, for the threads. Uh, maybe I should have, you know, done one uh, process for just the gnarled, you know, thumb screw part and then another process here and done like five perimeters to make it much, much more stronger. So two perimeters is uh, definitely not enough if you're doing some type of like actual mechanical part. Uh, this was kind of fun. I found this carabiner. I've seen a couple people print it. Uh, something on my build plate came off. Uh, I've seen a couple people print this carabiner. It prints in two parts and you just snap this top part together. But it works really well. I mean, it's super strong. If I twist it, you don't hear any creaking or anything. So that means it had very, very good layer adhesion. Everything came out great with this one. And uh, this will be kind of fun to use on uh, like a backpack or something like that. I printed these arms lastly here, and these were uh, for one of the MakerBox spools that I use. And as you can see, they're cracking a bit. So I need to up my uh, perimeters on this one as well because they are just not strong enough for, just in case they were get stuck, I want these to be strong enough and have a bit of flex to them. And in PLA and PETG, they actually are really strong. But again, here, just you need to change the settings and make it adapt for the part you're actually going to be using. All right, so overall, this filament came out really well. I like the way that it worked for most everything. I do need to tweak my settings a little bit more with this one. It wasn't as forgiving as I feel like PLA and PETG are. You need to really dial them in a little bit better where I had to really up my extrusion multiplier for some of these vases in order to, like, this was the final one that I did. And this came out great. Actually, on the bottom, you can see here, I should do this in the close-up. But the first probably oh, 40 or so layers here are frosted and then I upped the temperature because like, oh wait, I wanted to up that. So this bottom part is frosted and the top part is much more clear, a lot shinier, that crystally looking that they say with the higher temperatures. So that is very interesting that you can get both out of this. It printed very well, but it was a little hard to learn and uh, you really need to do your tests, like a benchy test or a cube test, like the cube test, they would have told me how hot I could print to get this look. So you just kind of have to play with it. And as with any filament, you need to dial in your settings and do a couple test prints like this. Don't do benchies, do simple tests first. Make sure you have your temperature dialed in and what you want, and then do something like a benchy and then build up from there. So that's just a little tip whenever you're trying out new filaments. Uh, I want to thank Ascentium for sending this to me. Uh, I got this in a maker box a long time ago, and it was really fun to print with just a small one to see it. And because they boast the it's like PETG, they'll be a little bit better, or it's a PETG alternative. I had to give it a try and see. I am not very good at structural prints, hence why I had some broken parts here. I'm used to printing models just for show. Uh, not necessarily for like strength use. So I do need to dial it in a little bit more for things like that. But uh, thank you Ascentium for sending this to me and I thank you for the opportunity to test this out. So that's gonna do it for this video guys. I hope you liked it. And if you think that this helped you out learning about this filament, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Let me know down in the comments below what I can do better in the future. If you wanna support the channel, best way to do that, subscribe. Every subscription really helps. Make sure you hit that bell icon that way you get an email anytime I upload new content. You'll be one of the first ones to know. If you want to support me financially, right below me is going to be a Patreon link. Hit that link. Donate me a dollar more. I greatly appreciate it. My current patrons, you guys are awesome. If you want to support me without spending your money, down below there's going to be a lot of affiliate links. Do your daily shopping with those. A little slice of what you buy comes to me. If you click over here, a couple of videos for you to check out other things that I've done. So until next time, guys, happy printing.